Hi and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about how to level the bed on a DaVinci 1.0 running Repetia Host 0.92. This has been asked a lot in the comments and I've tried to answer as best I can, but you know, it's a holiday day today, so I thought I'll make a video showing how I level the bed. There's a couple of things to take into consideration here. This is purely how I do it. This is not the definitive, you must do it like this. And you do need a USB cable and be able to connect your printer to the laptop to do this and finish it off. If you're only going to use part of this like um, guide uh, to, to try and level the bed, it's not going to work for you. You really need to follow every step. So we'll get started by seeing what we have to do to the printer. So to get started, we're going to remove the drip tray by pulling the carriage forwards. And then we'll just uh, grab this, drag it out the way, and then we'll push that back to, to somewhere where it used to be. And then we power on, uh, the lights come on, and it all looks pretty good from here. So if we go into the menu and go position, home all, that'll get the printer in a pretty nice reset position, ready to get started. So we need to go through maintenance and then to auto level bed. And at this instance, I'm going to say yes, and we're going to clean the nozzle. So we'll fast forward until it's heated up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, the wire brush that came with the Da DaVinci. Um, it came in the box of the toolbox. And as the bed drops out the way, we'll get in there and we'll just give the nozzle a good scrub. You know, there's going to be a lot of kind of dirt and not very nice melted stuff on there so just take a good few minutes give it a good scrub every direction you know front and back side to side as if you were brushing your teeth and when you're happy that it's clean we'll just hit ok to end the carriage will return to its home position and the bed will start heating up and um, once the bed's heated up it'll do its first set of measurements automatically so we'll fast forward to that point and then we'll talk about the numbers so to make adjustments to the controls, we need to know what direction to move them. So the three controls, if you go to the left, it makes the number bigger, which means it's closer to two than it is to one. And if you take the control to the right, it makes the number smaller, which is closer to one than it is to two. Now, as you can see, we have three totally wrong numbers here, and we're looking for minus 1.5. So forget about number one for a start, and we're going to bring number two and number three closer together. Now to do that, the control at the back on the left side, that will adjust the back corner and the front right corner. Now moving this one to the back is the plus and the front is the minus. Now we want to affect that corner at the front, so whatever we do to the corner at the back is going to be reversed so we want to make the number smaller so we've got to take the back corner to the plus which is pushing it towards the back of the printer which brings the front corner down and now we'll run another an, another setup and we'll see where it's going now i understand that this is entirely complicated it will get easier so now our numbers for two and three are pretty level so what we need to do now is bring number one in and as you can see, number one is almost a 1.6. So we need to adjust the back right control to the negative side, which is towards the back of the printer. So we're going to put a, a little turn on there. Now what you need to remember is whatever turn you put on this one, you have to put on the other one on the back as well. But you have to go the other way. So this one's going to go to the front of the printer the same amount and we'll go again. It isn't the easiest thing to kind of portray, but we will get there, I promise you. So here we go again. Now, the front is level within 20 microns, and the back is coming down, but it's still too high. So, a little trick I learned was, if you adjust the front up, it automatically brings the back down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust this one on the front, because it will bring points 2 and 3 at the same time, we'll give it quite a big turn to the left and we'll run again. And then we have to remember to click no and then yes, and then it will run another set of 
calibration numbers. And as you can see now, number one has gone way below minus 1.5. And number two and three have come right up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust number one so that number three goes down and number one goes up. And the way you do that is with the back right control. And we bring that to the plus side. No. Yes, it is to the plus side. So we just drive it to the plus, to the front of the printer. And we'll give it a little turn. And that, that side, that should bring that side down. So let's go for it again. Remember to do no and then yes. And it'll do another set. We'll just fast forward through that because we don't want to sit and watch it. Now what do we get? Now all the numbers are above 1.5, but they're pretty much the same. What what do we got there? 40, 50, 60, 70, kind of kind of 33 microns between them maybe? Ish. So that's about 10%, pretty close to 10% of a 0.2 layer. So now if we take all three controls to the negative side, which is to the right, so, you know, if you just remember to move them all to the right by the same amount, and this should bring the bed down by a level amount. So we'll do no, then yes, and we'll run it again. And we'll see what happens this time. Sometimes the numbers get a little bit jacked up when you do this. Don't get disheartened by it. you just got to run it. Right, so now we've got number one is pretty high. Number three is pretty low. And number two is kind of in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust corner number one and I'm literally going to tune in corner number one and corner number three and try and get them closer to number two. So if I, if I move point one down, it'll move point three up. So if I use the control at the back right and if I move it to the negative side, which is pushing it towards the back, give it a little turn. Um, just, that's the only control I'm going to use and we're going to go again so remember it's no then yes and it's off again now this does take some time to do right there we go that's very rare number two and number three are exactly the same so that means that the front of the bed is exactly level it won't be but that's what the numbers say but it's all too high so I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it again <laughs> And I'm going to try and get them below 1.5. Between 1.475 and 1 1.5 is pretty good. That's what I aim for. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do them all to the negative side again. All three controls to the negative side by the same amount. So we just give it a little bit of a turn on each of the three. And hopefully that will keep the bed pretty level and bring it down. And then we'll do no plus yes. And then we'll run it again. Now, <laughs> yeah, I know what you're thinking. We've done this five times already. Now we're pretty close. Look at these ones. Point one and point three are high and low again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust point one up. So bringing that to the front of the printer. And that should push point one up and push point three down. And then we'll do no then yes again. And we'll see what adjustment we've made this time. It's very trial and error this. And as you can see, point 0.1 is slightly higher than point 0.5. And point 0.2 and 3 are low. Now, what I'm going to do here is just increase point 0.2 and 3. Which will, of course, lower point 0.1. Now, hopefully, this is the last run. We'll see. We're getting really close now. So let's see what we're getting. 0 0.49, 0 0.495, 0 0.483. Now they look pretty good to me. I would say that that is pretty level. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm happy. That that looks that looks good to me. That that's where I'm going to stop. You 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 can get sucked in and and try more, but just hit OK. Just say no, and again. No. And that's exactly what you want to do. And you're done. So that's it. 
we're aimed for minus 1.5 and we're pretty close. So now if we just connect up the USB lead, plug it into the computer, run repeat your host and we'll have a look at the settings there. So here we are in repeat your host and um, we've connected our DaVinci printer via USB to it and we just need to go config print settings, make sure our COM port is correct and then hit connect. And that should turn green. There we go. So we should now have manual control of the printer. Yes, we do. And it's feeding back all the information. Good. So what you do is you literally just go up to configuration and then you go to this menu here, which says firmware EEPROM configuration. And what you're looking for is, um, where's it gone? It's a, one of these Z ones. I think it's about halfway down. There it is. Z home position in millimeters. That's the one you're looking for. Now, as you can see, mine is set to minus 1.5, but to literally change it, you just type in minus 1.500 and hit OK. And that's it. That is all you need to do. OK? If you don't do this bit, when you home the printer, it's going to go to zero or it's going to go to whatever number it was. So you need it to home to minus 1.5. The other thing you need to do in Repet Your Host is go to the slicer settings. So just by clicking the slicer tab and configuration, this will bring up the slicer configuration screen after a short delay, okay, quite a long delay. Right, here we go. There we are. I'll move that to the middle so we can see it. And if we go to printer settings tab and drop down to, I've got it listed as DaVinci stock, um, cause I'll mess about. Now, this is the number that makes it all work. If you don't set this Z offset to minus 0 0.6 millimeters, then it's not gonna work. Everything we've done is just not gonna work. If you don't have a slicer, like you say you're using Cura and you don't have the option to have a Z axis offset in it, it's not gonna work for you. I don't know how to get it to work like that. This is why I use Repetio Host. This is why I leveled to minus 1.5 because this Z offset needs to go in here. I can't stress this enough. And all you do is you just type in minus 0.6, hit the save button, and you're done. And finally, just go into the printer menu, go all the way down to settings, go all the way down again, keep on going. It's right at the very bottom. It's store EEPROM data and hit right, and that's it. It's stored and you are done. Easy. So there you go. Hopefully this video has been a bit more helpful than kind of a, a comment in a previous video that I did. Although I will copy and paste that comment in the description of this video, just so you don't have to keep pausing the things and going over it over again. Um, I just want to say that the, the section of the video where I leveled the bed on the printer using the printer controls, that took around 45 minutes to record. So please don't think this is something that you can do in like two minutes. Um, a lot of people have asked how often you level the bed. It depends. It depends how vigorous you are at cleaning it, you know, if you're pressing down on the springs and stuff and really rubbing hard to get the glue off or ABS juice or whatever you're using, then you're going to have to level it quite often. If you have a catastrophic failure and a print comes off and starts bashing the bed, you're going to have to level it again. Um, if you're quite careful with it, I don't level the bed every print. I'll probably level it between five and ten prints, depending on what happens. So hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll have the same kind of look as I do and it won't be kind of like a thing that you have to do every single time where you waste 40 minutes or 20 minutes to do it. I mean, I've had my DaVinci since February and it's took me quite a long time to to develop a, a technique for leveling the bed, but it, it is quite, it's quite reliable, I find. So, you know, if you find anything different, let us know in the comments as usual and, um, you know, I'll get back to you about it. So, as usual, please like, comment and subscribe. I've been Steve. Thanks for listening.